Good morning, everybody, and thank you for joining. Um, my name is Nichelle Dizatel, and I am a field education trainer for Wella Professionals here in Vancouver, BC. Today, I am going to be joined by Lauren Wild, and she is going to be doing a demo for us for with the new GHT tool, the Rise. So let me just get her in here. Good morning. Good morning. Am I sideways? Yes, you're sideways. <laughs> I'm going to turn you this way. There we, there we go. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing really good. How are you? I'm good. Good. So I'll take a second to introduce myself quickly. My name is Lauren Wild, and I am a brand educator for Wella Professionals, um, and I also focus on GHD. And I'm here to talk with you guys today about the new Rise hot brush that is just on the market. Um, if you haven't seen it, this is what we're looking at. We This is our first smart technology hot brush that we have on the market. And I'm really excited to share that with you today. Yay! Yeah, I'm excited. I got mine and I've used it maybe a handful of times. So I'm always excited to learn how to use it. It is the bomb. Honestly, since I brought this tool out, I haven't put it down. I think I've used it on all of my clients in the last two weeks since it's been at my station. So it's a really valuable tool and I'm really excited to talk about it today. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you said it was the first smart technology hot brush? Do you yeah, want to so what that, means, that? what that means is it is the first hot brush that we have on the market that has what we call ultrazone technology. And what that does is it ensures that the temperature of the iron stays at a consistent 365 degrees. And it's also monitoring the temperature 250 times per second. And what that means is it's assessing how much heat is being distributed and absorbed by the hair and as much um, heat that the iron needs to keep up to produce that constant uh, 365 degrees. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, so what did you have prepared for us today? So I have two looks prepared to share with you guys today, and it will be focusing on two different techniques using the rise brush. Um, and the first one being a volumizing technique. So what we're going to be using is a horizontal placement with the brush. Um, and then the second technique that I'm going to go through is more of a, a natural texture, like a wave. Um, and for that one, we'll be using a technique that uh, we use it vertically. So you guys will see the difference and where the advantages are with each technique. Awesome. So before I get started, I'm going to talk a little bit about this brush and what makes it so special. Um, some of the features on this brush are the nylon bristles, our half centimeter bristles, and I'll let you take a good look up there. These are the magic of this brush. It has the perfect tension. It will hold the hair really nicely around the brush. Um, it's nylon, so it's high temperature resistant, and I can actually, you can see, I can put it up against my hand because the bristles themselves don't get hot, which is great. It gives me a lot of control as a stylist, being able to um, work with the hair easily. It doesn't catch in the hair. I know that's a question that's coming up recently. I don't have any issues with the brush getting caught in the hair, um, so long as you're using the techniques properly, and we'll, I'll give you some tips to um, help you with that. Um, another feature is a swivel cord. It's an 8.8 .8 foot um, swivel cord, which is nice for a professional um, scenario. Of course, this works great for consumer as well, but as a professional, I like to see that it's got a nice long cord, so it's not getting tangled around my chair. Um, it has an on and an off sound, and this thing heats up in about 20 seconds, which is awesome. Um, and it has an automatic shut off after 30 minutes. Um, and it also has a two year warranty. So uh, again, as a professional, that just gives me a little added security when I'm purchasing a tool like this. I know that GHD's got my back, and, and two years is really, a, it, that's more than we can ask for for a heat tool. So 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, some of the benefits that we're going to see of this, again, because we're using ultrazone technology, so we're using a lower temperature of 365, um, you're going to see healthier, shinier hair, um, lots more volume, two times uh, more volume. Um, but I really can't stress enough how great the hair feels when you use this brush at the lower temperature. Um, all my clients notice they put their hands through their hair and they're like, oh, my hair feels so great. It's healthy. Um, so that's a huge advantage. Um, and, and the lower heat temperature also another advantage of that is your, your style memory is going to last longer. So what that means is when you style hair at that lower temperature, um, your curls are actually going to last longer. A lot of my clients ask me how I make my styles last longer for them than they can produce at home. And, and that's the main reason why is because we're using a lower temperature. Mm -hmm. um, most of the tools we see on the market these days go up to 400, some 450. That makes me cringe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but all of the GHD tools have a constant 365 degree uh, glass transition phase, which is the key to your best styling. Right. Yeah, I always feel like it's a big misconception that the hotter the better. And I feel that's something that I don't know where clients got it from or where I, I'm that not myth really came sure. from. I, but. And you know, to be honest, even as a stylist, it was hard for me to adjust to the lower temperature, like just getting used to using it in a slower fashion. But it's such an incredible way to style hair. My clients are happier. Their hair is healthier. It's, mm -hmm. it's got so many advantages to styling at a lower temperature. And not to mention your color is not fading, especially for like colors like mine, my vivid color, it fades fast. So um, as much as I can do on my end to protect my color and protect from fading, especially my blondes, um, toners are going to fade quickly when you're using a higher temperature. So um, styling at that lower temperature has a lot of advantages. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing. I know for me, especially getting my clients onto GHD, a big thing I notice is the health of their hair gets so much better when they're using a hot tool that's not turning up to 400 degrees. Uh, totally. Totally. <laughs> and a lot of people are surprised. They're kind of taken back because they almost don't even notice it styles so well that you would think that you're using a higher temperature, but you have all the benefits of a lower temperature. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Awesome. Um, well, I'm excited to get into your looks. So why don't we go into your first look there and see? Yeah, that. for sure. Okay. I'm just going to adjust my stand here. because she's a little low. There we go. Okay. So the first look that I'm going to run through with you guys is a volumizing look. And you can see I've already kind of pre um, done some of this look. Um, and I've, uh, barrel rolled these and pinned them up so that we can uh, see a nice volume there. Now, the biggest thing to focus on when you're using this rise brush, my tips for you right off the bat are to use really clean sectioning um, and and use clips if you need to um, to keep things out of your way because if you have a section that's not uh, parted nicely and you've got hair that's hanging over your section, though that hair will get caught onto your rise brush. That will cause a little bit of frustration. So the best thing to do is to keep your sectioning nice and clean. Now, for this volumizing look, we are gonna start at the bottom of this quadrant here. I'm just focusing on my front quadrant. I hope you guys can see that. And we're gonna start at the bottom. I'm using half inch sections. It really depends on the thickness of your client's hair. Um, you can use thicker sections and finer uh, hair, of course. I'd probably use up to like a, I'd say an inch thick section on finer hair you could get away with. Um, but all, for all intents and purposes, we're gonna use a half inch section here. And what we're gonna do is this rise is gonna be placed underneath your horizontal sectioning. I hope you guys can see this here. I'll do this a couple times. And we're lifting from under that root. We're trying to achieve maximum root lift because that's what we're going for. We're doing a volumizing look. So iron goes in at a horizontal placement. You're gonna glide that to the ends of the hair. And then you're going to allow those bristles to catch and just wrap it up and hold it there. Now, because we're styling at 365 degrees, you can let this sit for about five to eight seconds. Um, give it a moment to heat up. And then you're just going to roll that brush right back out. And then we're going to bear open this. Okay. Now, did you use any products today to prep the hair? 
I did, of course. Whenever we're heat styling, we always want to prep this product, uh, mannequin with a uh, heat styling spray. I use Sebastian Trilliant. Um, that's my favorite. It's the bomb. Um, and other things that you can treat this with, if you were focusing on a volume blow, especially if you're working on a bridal look and you want to get maximum volume out of this, you could totally prep this with a mousse or a foam. Um, I love using the Well and Nutricurls line because the mousse has a lot of bounce to it. Okay. So I'll run through this one again. So right underneath that section, and I'm kind of just giving it a little wiggle to make sure that the root is being lifted. Bring that towards the ends of the hair. We're gonna get a little wrap. We're gonna hold that for about five to eight seconds, and then we'll keep barrel pinning this look. Okay, now this works very quickly. Again, the lower temperature does not affect the time that I'm styling this mannequin in. In fact, I could probably, um, if I wasn't um, instructing as I'm doing this, I could probably finish this mannequin in about 10 minutes um, because it does work through the hair so easily and it's, it's very effective. Okay, so one more section here. Now, if you're working on someone that has quite layered hair and you find that you're losing some of this hair, um, don't stress out about it. Just kind of roll it up, um, collect some of the hair that's hanging out there and just catch it on some bristles and it will just tuck in there. Okay. So I would, I did the same technique all the way around her head in the top section. I had um, sectioned off a mohawk in her crown and I focused on volume there, of course. All right. I feel like this would be a great tool to replace, you know, hot roller sets for bridal parties and stuff like that. Totally. This is an amazing tool to replace that. And I actually had a scenario come up recently, a couple of weeks ago, where I was working on a bridal shoot and she wanted the va va boom Victoria's Secret hair. I, of course, was not prepared for that. I had 45 minutes to prepare this look and I'm like, oh my God pulled out my rise brush and it was phenomenal and in fact i would probably use the rise brush before doing a roller set or a round brush blowout for a bride at least i know that you know i've styled her um with the essential heat uh temperature and and it's quick i can work through this quite quickly and and the hair feels great after okay so the next step with this would be take these uh, barrels down and I'll do a quick brush here so that you guys can check out this volume right off the bat. Again, I feel the hair and it just feels awesome. You guys, this, uh, the quality of the hair, the, the shine in it is just awesome. Now, something that I didn't mention before I had styled this mannequin was that this was a pre-styled mannequin. So I didn't wash and prep her the same way that I typically would for a style. Um, and that was to show you guys for all intents and purposes that this brush works remarkably well on pre-styled hair. So if you've got someone that's already uh, straightened their hair, maybe they've uh, straightened it the day before, or they've pre flat iron curled it, um, and you're trying to get a nice, clean, fresh look without the blow dry, this is the tool for you. Um, what I notice right off the bat is that this gives a very airy, flowy type of style, um, like a blow dry effect. Um, with Typically with my irons, you're going to get that more pressed curl and where you're really going to notice the differences in fine hair. My hair is really fine and I noticed it right away that when I style my hair with uh, an iron, a curling iron or a flat iron, it almost like presses out some of my volume and I lose the volume afterwards. Um, but with the rise brush, because it's more of a brush, it works so well through pre-styled hair. I can go through any hair um, that's already been done, um, any texture of hair. This works great on thick hair, curly hair, fine hair. Um, and it gives, like I said, that blow dry effect. So it really feels like she's had a blowout done, but really we've just used the rise brush. So it's awesome. Yeah. And I feel like that would be a great tool for some of those salons out there that are still not doing blow dries and maybe doing dry cuts on their clients. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's something that I've done even behind the chair as well as I've done less of my blow dries. It's uh, rare that you'll see me do a round brush lately since uh, June, since we reopened in June, because I am doing a lot more um, heat styling. So, you know, that just gives me another reason to be, um, 
more conscious about the heat that I'm using on my clients' hair because we are seeing a lot more heat mm -hmm. styling in the salon these days. Okay, so I know it's tough to see the angle that she's at here, but she's got some fantastic volume. Now, this oh, isn't brushed out yet, but she's got really nice, soft, airy kind of volume, if you know what I mean. It's, it moves. It's, it's got a lift to it, as opposed to when I did this with an iron. It would be, it would be a very different result. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my next look that I'm going to show you guys I want to get into is the waves. Now, for me as a stylist, I, I will gravitate to a tool that's really versatile. Um, and that's why my Platinum Plus has always been the number one tool sitting at my station for the last couple of years. I use it on almost everybody. Um, I like to use it for waves. I like to use it for curls, straightening, you name it. I, I use it for everything. And admittedly, when I got this Rise brush, I thought, I'm not gonna like it because it doesn't seem versatile to me. And I'm pleasantly surprised to see all of the things that I can uh, use the Rise brush for. Okay, so again, with this mannequin, I've just uh, pre-sectioned quadrants. If you were gonna do a volumizing look, of course you could do um, a mohawk section on the top to increase some of the volume here. Um, now these are the curls that I'm getting. And uh, again, a, a question that comes up often is because the barrel is a one and a quarter inch barrel, um, a lot of people think that they're not going to get a nice volumized or like a bigger curl or can I get can I achieve a tighter curl with that iron and the answer is yes both ways I can I still have control over my iron based on the technique that I'm using to create that bigger blowout kind of curl or if I want to create some of these um, smaller little beachy waves mm -hmm. okay so this technique is gonna be a little bit different in that um, our volumizing curls, we used a horizontal placement for our iron and we are going to use the rise brush vertically this time. Now, if you're using this iron on yourself, you're gonna notice right away that if you are pointing the iron down, it's gonna give you a little bit of trouble. Um, the best way to use this is to point it up. It's a little bit tricky when you're using it on the other side of your hair, but you're going to find that once you get used to the technique that I show you, that it's actually really easy to become accustomed to that. Okay. So again, I've got my front quadrant here. And I'm going to start. Um, now we can take a wider section for this one. You're gonna see this section is about a two inch section here. And the reason is because we're gonna be doing vertical placements for this section. Hey. And how wide are your vertical sections? My vertical section, again on this one, it's about a one inch section. Um, it's fine enough in this section that I can feel I'm just used to using the rise brush and you'll get to know that too, what size of section to use, but this is um, ideal just for this hair type. Okay. Now what you're going to want to do for this technique is we're placing it vertically again, right at the root. We want to make sure that we're still getting heat on that root and you're actually going to take the tail and wrap it around. Okay, a lot like we do barrel pearls with a traditional curling iron in that we're going to work our way down the hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to glide down, do a wrap, glide down. Once I get to the end, I kind of do a twisting action and that will release it off of the iron. Okay, so this is the curl that I've achieved there. Amazing. And it's amazing how much the bristles really grip the hair and keep them on the on the barrel. They really do. And what impresses me is that like it has the perfect tension to use for a tool like this. If we had any more tension, it would be harder to use and glide through the hair. But it goes in and out of the hair so nicely that it's it just makes us effortless. Hey, okay, again, I'm just twisting through there because of that swivel cord allows me to twist the end out and then I'm just left my little curlies. Beautiful. Okay. So again, now I've just got the rest of this top section. That's just the second half, same size here. I've chosen to curl all the curls away from the face. So I am directing them 180 degrees this way. Now, 
in doing that, all of my curls are going to essentially create a form, which means that they're all going to bl uh, brush together and flow together really nicely. Um, but if you were trying to achieve more of a beachy look, like something that has a little bit more texture to it, where your curls don't brush and kind of clump together, um, then you just want to alternate your curls. So you do one um, away from the face and then one uh, 180 degrees towards the face. Okay, so again, one more time here, I'm just going to get right behind this section because we're curling away from her face. Take the tail, wrap it around. I'm going to hold it there for just a few seconds so that, that root gets a little bit of heat. Do a little twist underneath there. Okay, and then glide to the ends and just twist that iron out of there. And that's what we're left with. Awesome. Is there anybody out there that has their hands on one of these rice brushes already? Leave a comment if you have. I'd love to hear um, some of the experience that people have had with the rise. I know for me, again, it was kind of just getting used to the technique and and figuring out the best way to use it. But I am obsessed. Yeah, I know. Like when I got mine in the mail, I, I've been using it to kind of smooth out my hair second day, like when I've slept on it. Um, mm -hmm. But I haven't tried curling it with it yet. So we'll have to see. Curling? It it's a little bit different. But you know, I've actually let my clients put this in their hands and try it. And the ease of this thing is amazing. My clients are telling me that they could probably get through this um, with less frustration than if they were using a flat iron to do mm -hmm. curls at home. Flat iron curls are really frustrating. The hair glides right through that iron. So it's slipping constantly. But because we have the the uh, bristles on the brush to help you glide that through the hair. It actually makes um, that process easier for a consumer, which is great. Yeah. And have you been retailing them in your salon or? I have not yet as it's just available this week. I have a pre-order in for three of my staff already that are interested in getting their hands on this iron. Um, and the, the price is awesome. There, I believe that the, uh, cost for professional is about 170 180 um, which is really incredible you're probably seeing that retail around uh, 300 dollars but um, yeah what a remarkable tool for something that does a little bit of everything and I'm going to show you guys what this does in short hair as well but to give you an idea of what we've achieved here yeah total time if I was doing this um, not in front of my camera it would probably be about 10 minutes to yeah. get through this long hair okay now to finish her off i'd probably just spray a little bit of dry shampoo like dry clean only sebastian is my fave um and just to give her that like powdery soft kind of feeling yeah. okay yeah i love that it's a beautiful like a very like it reminds me of a round brush curl yeah like totally it's Would something you... that I'm not used to because I'm an iron girl and, you know, it's been a long time since I focused on some of those like airy, fluffy kind of looks. But especially with uh, these shakes coming back lately, it's it's definitely something that I'm seeing a lot more of behind the chair. Yeah. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys is how um, this rise will work through short hair. Um, again, I've, I've said probably a few times how versatile this iron is and that's that's what I love the most about it now a few different ways you can use it we can use it to do volumizing curls or waves like I showed you but you can also use it to smooth out some hair okay um, especially clients that have uh, those troublesome little curls and cowlicks around the hairline it's great for that um, especially with this shag fringe that's happening lately I know the biggest trouble is when someone has a really stubborn cowlick and this is a great way to just kind of uh, force that guy out of there. Mm -hmm. Now, what I can do with this shag even better, I love that I can just kind of run this through and give this a little bend around her fringe here. And it gives me that perfect shag texture. Oh, that's amazing, yeah. And again, for a consumer, this would be easier for them than attempting this fringe with like their iron, right? Because I have a lot of clients that do that. They 
take their iron out and they kind of sausage curl that thing and they don't know why <laughs> it's it, going awry but it was yeah. something like this it's it's brilliant this is going to be a little bit easier uh for a client to use on yeah. themselves and i also find when you try and flick it with the iron you don't get the desired kind of flow to it it's so no too... it never it's never quite the same it's, yeah. it's never the same but that's that's what I'm loving about this I have to say every shag that has come in it, I've just loved how this kind of creates that texture for me it's so simple yeah that's amazing I know for me I can always round brush one side back really well but the other side is always a bit of a exactly like get like turned exactly. around so something like this would be very easy to use totally yeah. especially with the length that you've got now Nichelle. it's that length can be really bothersome to clients because it's too short to work with flat iron and they're trying to smooth it all out and get it sitting the same on both sides but it's actually quite tricky to do that especially with those like bobs and lobs i i often get asked that question how do i make this side look like the other side <laughs> yeah. and it's it's really tricky but i'm again i'm actually i'm glad you mentioned that michelle because um the rise brush works beautifully for that and that we can create that little bit of that round out for our bobs it yeah. gives that nice little flow there okay super simple just kind of round that in there and that will give you your little round out there so again, for a client you know, that's not even desiring curls, this tool still could be useful to them. They might even just use it to volumize the crown. And, and it's, it's a fantastic tool for that as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Awesome. Well, I did prepare some questions for you because we have gotten lots of questions about this tool in the field. So I thought who better to answer them than you? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so and we've kind of talked about this, but what do, makes the rise so special? For me, what makes the rise really special is its versatility. Again, there's been very few tools on the market that have stolen my heart this way. The Platinum Plus was a big one for me and I stubbornly didn't want to put it down to even try this tool and it's definitely stolen my heart. So um, the biggest reasons being the technology behind it, the smart technology, um, gives me insurance for my client's hair and even for my own hair I know that the temperature is keeping the hair safe and healthy um, and the blow dry texture to it that blow dry effect there's nothing like it you can't I can't reproduce that with any of my irons so that for me it, it's a total game changer yeah that's amazing and then um, why would professional want to add this to their kit well, as a professional myself, I don't like carrying around many tools, especially when I'm going to work on a set, uh, like a shoot set or a wedding. I like to take um, as little tools as possible because I could just get carried away and take the whole salon with me, right? So um, because it's a versatile tool, I can use it in many different scenarios um, for me that that really makes it stand out. Um, and, and the the best tool to sell your client as well as a GHD is because of that temperature and the ease of the style style ability. So for me as a stylist to be able to recommend such a fantastic tool and, and be able to tell them that this is a tool that I use. This is my tool at my station. It's, it's professional. And, and this is the technology that you're going to be taking home with you. Mm -hmm. I know for me, I was surprised, especially when I saw the cord length, I was like, oh, so they are kind of marketing this as a professional tool. And I didn't really know where it was going to position. But um, seeing what you kind of created today definitely changes my mind and makes me want to bring it into the salon and use it. Yeah, <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> um, so what are some tips you would give someone using it for the first time? So first time picking up the tool, you'll get a sense once you get this in your hand, it actually feels really light. Um, the weight is in the burrow. Um, first off the bat, right off the bat, I'm gonna suggest not uh, pointing it down. As I mentioned in the tutorial, it's much better, much easier to use it if you're pointing this up. Again, because we can kind of twist and drag that out of the curls easier and you're not gonna get tangled up in it. 
Um, clean sectioning is really important. So making sure that all the hair that you don't need to be using at that moment is kept nice and tidy and out of the way so that your bristles aren't catching on any of the other sections. Um, and, and the other thing that I forgot to point out earlier is the, the cool tip on this. So um, it's going to allow you a lot of control. And that's something that I'm not typically used to. I don't tend to use the tip much, but it really did make a difference um, in, in the easeability of the, the tool. Yeah, I mean, I know for me, I burn my fingers all the time. So the cool all the time. <laughs> um, okay, so would we be able to use this on all hair types? Absolutely. And I had mentioned earlier that this tool like kicks butt and working through pre-styled hair and it works the same way um, with textured hair as well, which is just blowing my mind. And again, because we're using the lower temperature, the, the quality of the hair, the health of the hair is so much better in that regard. Yeah, that's amazing. And I feel like a lot of time people with textured hair, they don't almost like the flat iron pressed look like they do want a little bit of volume in there but sometimes your round brush is just not enough to get all yeah, that curl yeah out. for sure it can be tough especially getting through those tiny little curls around the hairline it's tough to round brush especially if a client's doing that on their own hair they just can't achieve that salon quality at home but with something like this it really does give that to you it gives you the salon feel at home with your hair um, and it's great, like I had mentioned, for just like even going around the hairline, straightening out your calyx or some of those, you know, really stubborn little curls right around the face there. It's, it's really remarkable. Yeah, that's amazing. I know a lot of clients struggle with those pieces. So, um, and then the last question I have for you is why would someone choose the rise over the glide? So the biggest difference between the rise and the glide because the glide if you're not familiar with the glide this is what the glide looks like it's our hot brush and it works great it's great for uh straightening hair for cleaning up your hair a uh, second day and retouching your hair um but it lacks the versatility of the rise because i can create so many different looks with it i can create my curls my waves um my shags everything right i'm i'm a little bit more limited with the glide um and the other thing that makes it different is the rise has a smart technology so it has that ultrasound technology that is constantly monitoring the the temperature of the iron 250 times per second and that's something that is unique to the rise brush Amazing. Yeah. I know. I feel I kind of feel like the glide is definitely more of a consumer product. And then the rise, I can definitely see us using it in the salon. A lot. Yeah, for sure. I think honestly, now that I've used it as much I have, I think it's going to be a real toss up to see who is using this iron more professional or consumer because despite my skepticism around this brush, it's actually worked its way into my top spot. I use it more than anything else now. So Oh, that's amazing. Well, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming on here, Lauren. Yeah, no I problem. Appreciate... Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm sure we'll have you back again. Um, and thanks to everybody that joined today. We have lots more lives coming to you on Wella Canada West. Um, if you want to go to the highlight section on our Instagram page, we do have a schedule posted there. Um, so we look forward to bringing you guys more content and we'll probably be putting out some polls in the next few weeks to see what kind of content you guys want to see. So definitely, you know, get in there and let us know what you guys want to see. Um, if you guys have any questions regarding the rise or anything GHG, you are more than welcome to send us a message here on Wella Canada West or send Lauren a message and her handle is wild hair day. And that would be wild with an E. Um, I'm sure she'd love to answer any questions that you guys have. Yeah. Um, but that's all we have for you today. So thank you. And I'll see you guys all again. Thanks for joining. Have a good day, Michelle. You too. Bye. Bye.